know Faker, and you know his story. The greatest player to ever touch League of Legends exploded onto the scene. By the end of his first year of pro play, he was a world champion. He was the face of his game, the next generation. They called him the Unkillable Demon King. They called him God. Baker built the game's greatest dynasty. He faced down every challenger and he defeated all of them. But at Worlds 2017, that all came crashing down. unkillable Demon King had died. The inevitable became the inadequate. But he wasn't done. This is the story of how League's greatest player tasted defeat, sunk to his lowest point, and came roaring back. This is Faker, and his story isn't over yet. After three consecutive World Finals, SKT were finally not the best team in the world. So now, the question was, could Faker find a way to become the game's most dominant player yet again? To do it, SKT would have to assemble a new roster. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2018 LCK Spring. My name is... Bel rookie Top Tall and Rookie Jungler Blossom stepped into the roster. An effort, who'd been a substitute support in 2017, joined the starting lineup. And it didn't take long to see that the experiment wasn't going to work. He's just too damn low. He'll get spat out, goes back to the fountain. MVP, they have done it! Not only do they break the losing streak, they go to game three versus SK Telecom T1 and they defeat them in a match for the first time since they have joined the LCK. As Kramer picks up the kill now, they're all gonna flood forward. There's knockups left, right and center. A double kill as Kramer, his only game of the day. And he picks up the double and ends it for the Afrika Freaks. It's a 2-1, it's a different story for the first meeting in this particular season for the Afrika Freaks and SKT, but the same result in the end. After a 1-5 start in the spring season, Blossom got to start in the jungle over Blank, and SKT managed to climb to a spot that was far from dominant, but put them in the playoffs. But their longtime telecom rivals, KT Rolster, didn't recognize the SKT they faced in the quarterfinals. Faker's team was eliminated 3-1, and SKT would not attend MSI for the first time since the tournament was created in 2015. It was one of the lowest points of Faker's career. And as his star waned, the international league scene was starting to shift. It's caught up by Khan. Khan gets jumped by. He's got the ultimate available. Gorilla is not going to be able to save him. And King Zone is in tatters for the first time ever. RNG is chasing success. Royal never give up. Rule the world. Winning MSI 2018. but it got even worse. The summer saw SKT fail to qualify for the playoffs, and Faker even saw some time on the bench as Pyrian played in some important victories for the team. Coaches have entered the booth, and guys, you're expecting Faker to come back. It looks like he's not gonna be there. That was Pyrian on your screen. I'm a bit flabbergasted that we didn't, don't see the master of the mid lane himself, Faker, joining the squad, but Pyrian is who they're going to choose when it all comes down to this game number three. In the end, this roster at this time just couldn't do it. Are going to be making it to the Friday matchup up against Griffin. It was close here in five games, but Gen G, they're able to pull it out. And everyone at the next Sun Arena and you in the chat were there when the dream died for SK Telecom T1. The run that saw them hit three consecutive World Finals does end today. After a heartbreaking loss to Gen G in the gauntlet, Baker failed to qualify for Worlds. He'd have to sit out the game's biggest event for the first time since 2014. In a year, Faker had gone from a heartbreaking second place at Worlds to missing Worlds completely. In a lot of ways, it mirrored 2014. Faker missed out on another tournament hosted on home soil. Welcome to the world 
Championship! And the troubled 2018 season changed Faker's approach to the scene. He stopped reading everything his fans posted about him on social media. He began to fear that the negative things they said might come true. And for Faker, time marched on. At the end of 2018, he was the oldest starting mid laner in the LCK. 2014 Faker, feeling the sting of missing worlds, threw himself into the game. But in 2018, after being eliminated in the gauntlet, he took a break. He admitted he was feeling anxious and that he couldn't confront the feeling without resting and considering it. And while he said he didn't defeat it completely, he argued that he could turn it toward the future as motivation. Two thousand fourteen Faker was intense and irrepressible. Two thousand eighteen Faker was vulnerable, but with the kind of confidence that comes from feeling the pain of failure and knowing that it can't be allowed to define your present. What was in front of Faker for two thousand nineteen was a team filled with some of the biggest names in League of Legends. 제가 팀에 들어왔을 당시, 아니, 팀에 음, 오퍼 왔을 때, 왔을 당시에 뭐 누구 하나 들어오는 사람이 없었지만 그냥. Faker was officially made team captain after re-signing with SKT. He almost undoubtedly received offers from all over the world, but he chose to remain in his home region. But his region was burning. Korea had their worst showing ever at Worlds 2018, failing to even make the semifinals. It's Lamps this fight, giving a Victor's game and topped off. They're gonna be just fine. Death really gonna got come it. away. Rookie's got the chain. KD Rolster has fallen. And Invictus Gaming will do what has not been done since 2014. They will eliminate the Korean first seed and they will move on to the semifinals. If Faker wanted his country to reclaim the throne, it seemed he would have to do it himself. By the time the 2019 season kicked off, Faker was clearly part of a contending team. They spent most of spring in second place behind a nearly unbeatable Griffin roster. But playoff SKT is always a force, and they swept both their semifinal match against Kingzone and the finals against Griffin. See your death and see your defeat in the LCK final for spring 2019. Spring often does this to us, gentlemen. We often get the quick ones in the early stages of the year, but this is one that I don't think anyone expected. SKT. 3-0 over Griffin after their incredible first round robin. Faker had earned another LCK title, his seventh. But despite the team's strong showing, he took a moment to apologize to his former teammates from 2018 for the team's previous poor performance. And last year, we really had a bad result, so... And there are a lot of former SKT players who used to play with me last year, and we kind of missed a lot of trophies if we even did better, so I feel kind of sad and bad for them also. Ah, here, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but... Emotional, even in victory, Faker was already looking ahead to MSI. And you made a promise or a pledge that if you MSI win, you're going to win the MSI too. What if uh, your opponent wins? What was the promise? I'm going to win the world. The mid-season invitational would be a chance for Faker to show the spring run was more than a domestic title. It could be the re-emergence of a global contender. And Korea, previously so used to winning on the world stage, hadn't taken a single event since Worlds 2017. They desperately wanted an international victory. And even as Korea had fallen, other regions rose to take their place. China seemed poised to assume the throne, but Europe and even North America could no longer be ignored. I think the shape of International League of Legends changed a lot by the time we were heading into MSI 2019. Um, Korea for years had been this unassailable giant, right? But uh, by that point, I think people had realized that wasn't the case. They really fell down at Worlds 2018 and other regions had started to emerge as real threats on the international stage. Obviously, China were the winners of Worlds 2018, but Europe and even North America were starting to produce some teams that the international community really had to take seriously. In the group stage, SKT put up a solid 7-3 record. 
but worryingly, two of those losses came against G2 Esports, the European organization with a flair for unpredictable strategies. Ladies and gentlemen watching MSI, do EU believe G2 obliterate SKT? The other came against Invictus Gaming, China's representative at the tournament and the 2018 world champions. Invictus Gaming smashed the world record. They smash SKT and IG are 4-0. SKT's road to an MSI win may have looked difficult, but it certainly didn't seem implausible. Their first round opponent, though, was the one they found the most difficult in groups. And Papa Smithy, we've got a spicy game ahead of us. I mean, Taipei is bubbling, we're bubbling, we're ready to jump up and down like Kobe was yesterday, and which way it goes is so up yep. in the air. We had a moment in time yesterday, another one is gonna be made today. And Fake has been able to join the fray. Five members of G2 trying to push forward, but the leading wave is getting obliterated. Oh! Massive! Manages to steal the knob! Faker turns around! He hijacks G2's chances! Listen to that crowd as SKT turn it around! Rise joins the top side, here they go! Alright, Abyssal Voyage will deliver Teddy to the back line, but Caps and Wonder are on the Nexus! They will not go quietly! The Nexus is being focused, but look at Faker! Nexus, one or two more hits! Many more on top! Wonder forces game five! It's a dunk from Wonder, death from below! For the double, for the ace! for the Baron and the base. G2 obliterate SKT. Look at all the death timers. They're looking to stamp their authority onto the SK Telecom Dynasty and make their way to the final. Baron empowered minions are pushing into the base. The gap be damned. Champions can fall, gods can bleed. Where were you when the West rose up to conquer champions? G2 Esports eliminates SK Telecom. North America face Europe at the MSI Finals! Baker once again has to stare into his own despair. It's a well-deserved victory for G2. Baker hadn't won MSI, but Worlds was still on the table. First, though, they'd have to earn a spot. <laughs> But SKT's start to LCK Summer 2019 was anything but encouraging. After winning their first match, they dropped five straight. Final Nexus turret, that's gonna be the game, maybe. Should be, they're trying to jump in on this one and kill one more person, but Khan is gonna end it in the stopwatch. And GG, the Nexus will go the way of Griffin. So props to them, they take the 2-0 victory over SK Telecom. Well done. SK Telecom, the lost streak continues. This is the end of the game. There was a lot of pressure. We were doing the same thing. 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 Although the streak clearly had an impact on Faker, he never seemed to lose confidence that they could turn it around. <laughs> Faker had predicted a perfect end to the season. They didn't quite get there, but lost only twice in their remaining 11 matches. It was classic SKT. They just had to make playoffs, and they would always be a contender. SKT's placement meant they had to run the whole gauntlet, and run it they did. Desperately to chase them down, and now goes in the front line against it. That go will not be able to stand up to him. As another fight in the top side, Baker gonna go one v three at this point as he still has his ultimate. Takes out two, and will be going here onto on fleek. Nice knock up, but still. This is an Echo, and you know the party never ends if you're an Echo player. And when they got to the finals against Griffin, it was clear that SKT had come a long way. This wasn't a team of untested youngsters following along in Faker's footsteps. They were a force to be reckoned with. Look at this lane, stay two, looking for the flash into the cocoon. Looks like we'll have our first blood, and that one's gonna be given to Faker in the mid lane. Take a look at Teddy. Just watch this Ezreal, he's looking for it, gets the flash, here comes Cod over the turret, going for the kill. Would have had some help from his buddy Teddy, but he's able to do it alone. Griffin 
going for the Baron here. Can they get it? It's going to be up to Glenn. He's going to get in there, and it goes to the Brom! Effort gets in there and spikes it away at level 14. How is he able to do it? This time it's not Glenn, but it's still SKT. And the team fight afterwards is done. And we've all seen this video before. It's like a recording. Khan is going to end the game once again on the split push. We're going to a 2-0 lead now to SKT. Griffin go all in, and the cards are up on the table. SKT win again. Doesn't have a health bar. In goes Effort. Uh -oh. And it cards up everybody. And what a way to end the game. SKT get a sweet Griffin here into the dumpster. And they are going to do it. SKT will sweep in the playoffs and take down every single team in their path. They are the most dominant team from the Korean region, and they are the very accurate winners of today. Faker had once again displayed domestic dominance, but he couldn't rest as the world's best gathered to battle for the Summoner's Cup. Despite every player being individually strong, the team behind him had seemed ironclad at times and out of sync at others. If they wanted to win worlds, they would need the consistency they had found only recently. And at the end of it all, SKT emerged first in their group, topping EU's second seed Fnatic and China's second seed RNG. It was one of the toughest worlds groups ever, and their only loss was to Fnatic. Their quarterfinal match was against Europe's third seed, Splice, who they defeated comfortably 3-1. The battle begins, and they're going to look for a lot of damage, but already Cersei is gone. There's a shot to the back lines, not going to live either. SKT, gods can bleed, but they will not die. A quarterfinal win, 3-1, and we'll see you next week. But their next opponent wasn't just in their way. For Faker, avenging himself against G2 Esports was personal. G2 struck first, but SKT managed to even the series. And with the gold nearly even in game four, the match ended with a nail-biting team fight that saw Faker and SKT eliminated in dramatic fashion. It out though, Clint had to go up into the air and it doesn't matter if he messed it up because Clint is still gonna go down with Khan. Right to the backside, Caps goes gold and there's no one else to follow up. Khan's damage doesn't matter. But the ulti comes out at such a close exchange for now they're winning, but Perks is coming in. This is his hero moment. If he wants to turn this fight in favor of team, this could be the game. He gets the fight up. moment. Faker is gone. Teddy's next on the list. There's no way he can duel Yasuo. Amon is coming in, but he's just walking into the meat grinder of Perks. Khan, can he do it? Perks. They've done enough. They've done it. They're going to lose. G2. Khan, can he get it done? He can't. The Vladimir, they can't do it. This is it. The greatest team in the history of League of Legends. Taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced. FPX, get ready. G2 is heading to Paris. As Europe celebrated, Baker left the stage quickly. Hardened by his experiences in 2017, he tried to look at the positive. But one thing's for certain, Baker could have walked off that stage in 2019, chose to retire right then and there, and he'd still be known as the greatest of all time. In the off-season, Faker re-upped his contract with SKT, now rebranded to T1. Gone now were Khan, Clid, and Mata. Perhaps even more shocking was the departure of their longtime coach, Koma, who had been an integral part of the organization's long-term dominance and who had coached Faker since he was first recruited from Korean solo queue in 2013. Their AD carry, Teddy, remained, as did Effort, who had started over Mata through most of Worlds. And filling the spots left vacant were a variety of new faces. Trainee Kana and veteran Roach were added to the top lane, while Kuz was recruited to fill the jungle vacancy. On paper, it's hard to say that this team looks stronger than the one that included Khan and Clid. The team finished third fourth at the Kespa Cup, but has had strong results in the LCK so far. As for Faker, the truth is, he doesn't need to win in 2020 to be the greatest. But you can be certain that he'll be trying his damnedest no matter what.
And it won't surprise anyone if it happens. Because as long as Faker is in the game, there's a chance that the plausible can become inevitable. That the wounded can again become immortal. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.